Jen. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? This is Matthew. Hi, Matthew. I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. Are you? I see you have a San Antonio number. Are you a former Texan? Yep. I'm born and raised. Nice. I'm in Dallas. Fellow oh, Texan. Oh, okay. Very born cool. And raised. At Pace, we met this guy named Khan because we put our California house on the market. And we got a lot of moving parts, but he thinks that you are the man to help us push this over the line. Yes. We talked, he and I talked uh, this morning, and I just give you some background. So I'm a 20 year mortgage guy through and through. That's my full time day job. I, I run a yep. team of mortgage people here in Dallas, but I'm also in the same sub two community that Khan is in. And I made a couple of videos about three months ago on how veterans or conventional FHA buyers can go get a mortgage right now while their home is still technically, the mortgage is still technically under their name and it's being sold subject to. And that mm -hmm. video took off like wildfire because that's the flavor of the day is a lot of people are trying to sell their homes and they're either not getting the price they want or it's not moving at the speed they want. She mentioned that you're trying to buy a house in Washington. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. And so I think you've got a you've got a VA loan on your place in California, balance around nine hundred and change. Yeah. So we let me see if we're we listed it at nine seventy because of what we owe, right? Yeah. Anyway. So, so I guess that's your closing cost, that you're paying realtors, you want to have the loan paid off. Correct. Gotcha. What is what's facilitating the move? Are you guys relocating for job or military? Yeah, so Michael's retiring. We have a soft date of, of November 30th, and I got, I've got i already started my new job in Washington State in Vancouver, which is why, I'm like, oh, perfect, I'll accept this job. You'll retire in a couple of months. Within that time frame, we need to sell this house, like, ASAP or do something because mm -hmm. I'm already working, so I'm not trying to live out of an apartment up here or a hotel until all this happens. And so I found a house that I really like out here, or several actually. And so I started, I was like, since I have to travel to Washington, let me start looking at some houses. And I found a house that I really like, and that's what started this aggressive process. So can I walk through, based on what he's told me, what you've told me, I'll just tell you how we would structure it. And this will hopefully yep. give you some confidence going into the weekend as to what you guys could, as a couple, make some decisions for. Mm -hmm. So. First and foremost, I, I did 38 of these in July, 25 in June, 36 in May. So I, I do this a lot. You're not alone in the scenario that you're in. And everybody's mm -hmm. got their pain points. Everybody's got their various reasons for needing to move across the country, across states, whatever. Yep, but yep. The, way that we, the way that we do this, because you've got a couple of moving pieces to solve for you, and then there's a couple of moving pieces to solve on the mortgage side. On the mortgage side, you're trying to get a mortgage now, let's call it now, let's call it within 90 days, while this mm -hmm. other debt that's te technically going to be paid by somebody else, and I know yep. Conwin is going to pay the debt, I have no issues with that, but how do I take the fact that somebody's going to take over your payments and there's no history of that, how do I count that to your benefit to let your, yep. income, now, to let your income now be freed up to go do what you need to do on another house? Yeah, we do it with yep, what, we do it with what's called a lease purchase. A lease purchase yep. is a purchase. It's a purchase contract. Purchase contract means that you and Con and your your spouse enter into an agreement that you're going to sell at X price by X mm -hmm. date, but mm -hmm. the first let's call it indeterminate interim period is going to be governed under a lease purchase. Meaning mm -hmm. he's going to pay you whatever your monthly payment is. Mm -hmm. until you get to the closing table. We don't want you to get to the closing table on your California home until you are closed and funded on your Washington home. And here's the reason why. If you, okay. wait, to, if you wait to close on your California home after we close on the Washington home, I can consider cons payments to you for your current mortgage as rental, quote unquote, rental income to offset your debt. Mm -hmm. And that's what washes that out. And now you have a clean slate to effectively close on a new mortgage. Once you're closed on the new mortgage in Washington, literally three to five days later, 
you terminate the lease section of your lease purchase, and now you effectively transfer the deed in the, on the California home to him. You close on that property, and he now starts making payments directly to the mortgage company instead of to you directly. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. or not he and you agree to down payment is a different conversation. If you're in a situation where you tell him, hey, you know what? We don't care about down payment. We just need the debt off, off of our shoulders. That's between yeah. you and him. Um, yeah, so here's, what here, we here's the thing. This is where I don't know, because I'm pretty familiar on the rundown, but the thing is, Matthew, so would I be able to use a VA loan to buy my Washington house? If so, then using a VA loan, we've never had to use a down payment. Correct. But I've um, never used yeah, it'll, it'll, a tier two it'll be tough. VA loan either. It, it will be tough because you have such a large balance on your current VA loan. Right. And so much of your entitlement is being used yeah. on that. Now, could, yeah. could you use a VA loan on your second purchase? Absolutely, you can. You will not have that much buying power. So I run into this more in California, New York, and like Miami, Palm Beach area where the lending is a little bit higher because the cost of housing is higher. Mm -hmm. um, if you get a $950,000 mortgage in VA 100% financing in California, and now you want to go buy something in Washington, Oregon, Texas, what we consider more traditional housing mm -hmm. loan limits, mm -hmm. you're only going to be able to buy like a $200,000 home at 100% right. financing. So in that, in that situation, VA may not be your best bet right now. It might be a conventional option with three or five percent down so i've had veterans in the same situation where they'll pull three or five percent out of like their retirement account just to get the home closed and then sometime down the road if that va that they're selling sub two if that va gets paid off either because khan brings in his own loan eventually or he sells the property to somebody else who pays off the loan and you're if your entitlement gets restored that way, then yeah, now you can refinance your Washington home into a VA loan and enjoy 100%. Maybe for the time being, you may have to put three to 5% down just to get it done. Yeah, that, that's what I need to know that what is going to happen because if I can't close on my Washington house because I don't have my VA loan, then I need to have that money. Now, the question is, do I have the money? How much do I need? I need some really hard numbers here because I need a house. <laughs> it's in Clark County. It's a loan limit of 7262. If it was like Seattle, Bellevue area, you'd be at a higher limit, but it's 7262. Here's how, Jennifer, here's exactly how we calculate your entitlement options. Okay. We take, what was the original balance of your California mortgage? I think it's 940. 940 times 0.535. Right now you've got 235,000 in entitlement being used. You effectively have almost negative entitlement if you go to Clark yes. County. So VA is going to be essentially off the table, to be honest with you. I see. So now what you do is you look at a conventional loan. A conventional loan, you can do 3% down. So mm -hmm. let's say you find a house for 550000 I'm just going to make up a number. If you take 550000 times 3%, mm -hmm. you're probably bringing about $17,000 down. Mm -hmm. And then I typically would recommend if you have a real estate agent that's going to be helping you navigate the buying process, that you negotiate the offer in such a way that the seller covers your closing costs yeah um, so here now let me give you the, the washington side i've already put an offer in a house okay it's five and so because we listed the california house as hoping someone would outright buy it we put the offer in with the loan type of va for the okay. washington house now that con has come along all of this is going to change so we would have to redraft documents take it off the va put it to conventional okay right now my question to you is 
the seller of the Washington house is putting down $20,000 in closing costs. Nice. We're not going to get to $20,000 in closing costs. Not, Why? not up here. Oh, your offer requested that, but they haven't accepted it yet. No, they've accepted. Both sides have already accepted. And so it's twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Then why did you say why did you say that's not gonna happen if they've already accepted it? No, what I mean is like the closing cost from what my lender is telling me up here, that it's not even gonna the closing costs aren't even gonna come close to that. Gotcha. Okay. Twenty thousand okay, dollars. Yeah, that's where I'm right can now. I can I chime in on something? Um, yeah, totally. here's an example. I just, I like to give examples so you know it's real life. I had a veteran in Newport Beach, Virginia, obviously a huge veteran mm -hmm. area. He had a $800,000 VA outstanding. He could not use VA, had to go conventional. Mm -hmm. Conventional mm -hmm. has very expensive PMI. Yep. And so his seller was given 30,000. They used like 14,000 of that for closing costs, taxes, insurance, all that standard fluff that you've got to account for and then mm -hmm. we did what was called a essentially an upfront mortgage insurance premium to where the seller's additional 13 to 14 grand helped cover the pmi for the life of the loan so your closing costs may not reach mm -hmm. the amount that the seller's giving therefore what can we put on there to use the rest of it and you can put pmi on there to give you the feeling of it being a, P, uh, a VA loan because VAs don't have PMI. So if you have to flip from VA to conventional, you don't have to redo the whole contract. Your seller doesn't care, nor do they necessarily need to re-sign a document that says you're going to use conventional financing. Your purchase price is going to stay the same. The closing contributions mm -hmm. will stay the same. Now you just have to figure out on your own where's the 3 or the 5% down payment going to come from. Correct. Is it going to come from you? Is it going to come from a combination of you and con? Those are the things to work out that the seller of the Washington home just doesn't need or care to know. Correct. Yeah, I'm tracking all of that. But in my mind, because we already had VA listed, right, because our thought was to sell the house, I was like, oh, we don't need a down payment. Perfect. But now we're going to change the gears. And now I have to figure what? out, okay, where are we going to come yeah, up what, with this down payment from? What closing date was on that offer that, that everybody accepted? Um, the closing date, uh, I don't know. I did it when I was first here. We had a 45-day. So technically, you're actually in a better situation for your seller because now your seller can, to them, right. the fact that you're not necessarily needing to sell it on the retail market makes it better right. for them. The, now Correct. the pain point is, is on you to find the three or the five percent down. Yeah, I'm understanding all of this, Matthew. And then that's how we presented it to the sellers in the beginning, basically. Yeah. And now we're back going to conventional. And I'm like, no, there's absolutely in the conventional guidelines a lease purchase. And in conventional lending, it can also be called a land contract. You may hear that word thrown around. Mm -hmm. Now this lease purchase. Mm -hmm. Let's be really clear. This. The lease purchase that I would execute with you and Con, it's only meant to satisfy Fannie, Freddie, FHA, or VA underwriting yep. guidelines. Yep, yep. Um, it's meant to be a very narrow gap reason for getting the transaction done. That's, that's nine times out of ten when people come to me, they've already struck out with somebody else, and that's where we, so, we fill that gap. Hey, Matthew, so can I be really, really honest with you? I feel like you're my only hope and my Washington lender, right? She has 20 years. She's, she's pretty savvy. Like she's, she's pretty firm. She's like a no staff type person. Like she's pretty hard. And I like that. Like I need pit bulls in this transaction. I don't need like little chihuahuas. This is yeah. a very complicated case. So I, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just like, Jesus. I actually just you. want to fire everybody and start all over. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm with you. I can't, um, I can't do that with my current realtors because I've already signed all this shit. So. No, realtors, to be honest with you, realtors are great. They are there to do the property side. I don't expect them to get a master's degree in mortgage finance in a matter of, of two yeah, weeks. I totally. just don't. It's and so what, what I'll do, it is complicated, but like when I tell people that I've done literally 36 of these in July, 20-something in June, 35 of these in May, 
I can give Matthew, you names why, of people I've worked. That's why I'm telling you, you're my only hope. I'm serious. I'm like, I'm dead serious. I'm so over everybody. I, I need someone who knows what the hell they're doing. What is your email? Because I want to send you a draft copy of the lease purchase that I use on every one of my deals. And okay, I will sure. show you exactly what we do. I just sent you a Word document, and let me know when you get it. Yep, let me see what you got. And I was like, like tearing. I was like, oh, thank God, somebody knows what they're doing. Jesus, it's so frustrating, Matthew. I can't even explain to you how tired I am of everybody. The guy that I was talking about, Virginia, his wife. They're they're probably late 30s, early 40s. He's a disabled veteran, disabled, totally able to work, but the VA 70% disabled with VA. Wife was perfectly healthy in March, went to the hospital in April. And so he literally had to find a single story house. He had a two story house, um, had his house listed on the market for three months, wasn't moving. And here comes a sub two buyer. Now sub two buyer had a 50 grand down payment because the sub two buyer was actually going to live in the house. Oh, nice. um, and so he was able to get what he needed done. He had to do a conventional loan with 5% down. The yep, seller yep. paid all the closing costs and the PMI up front. But those are the kind of stories that I love. Same situation, a little bit of a different pain point than what you've got, but yeah, yeah. striking striking out at all the other options. For real, literally. Yeah. Yep. What and so what we you? do, here's what we do. So under under page two, section six, we mm -hmm. put in, if, if it, this is if there's any down payment dollars, if, even if there's no down payment dollars, we put zero there. The language yeah. that makes, the, the language that makes this essentially cancel out your payment for your debt ratio purposes mm -hmm. is sections two, three, four, five is the, the purchase agreement. It's really a purchase agreement with the option to lease instead of a lease with the option to buy. Yep. And yep. so that's what effectively makes this a cancelable mortgage payment. Who writes this up for me or? Cons transaction coordinator will. So in our sub two community, you've got, obviously his purpose is to reach out to you to get your walls broken down to where you'll actually talk to him. He goes to a licensed transaction coordinator in our community Got it. and says, Got it. here's our terms, Here's and they work up a package. That package is going to include your true purchase contract, all your sub two addendums, and then whatever performance measures that you guys agree to. Yep. Um, and the reason why I like this program is because it's a win-win for all. Somehow, oh, yes, some way. Absolutely. My goal is to get my debt to income ratio off my books, and I need to get to Washington as fast as I can. And live in an actual house, not out of an apartment. Okay. Now, but we can I tell you something real quick? Let's say I'm just going to draw this out. Let's say we become your lender. Let's see you and Con execute documentation. Mm -hmm. We could easily make that closing date. That closing date's way far out in my world. Yeah, realtor side, I wouldn't necessarily worry about them. I would just say, in the world of realtors, to for to give each realtor a sort of a PhD in this sort of stuff, it's, it's going to be impossible. E even for your most seasoned realtors, it still I makes their that. brains explode. And, and I don't expect them. I'm, I've been doing this 20 years and it took me 20 years mm -hmm. to really learn it all. I just need them that if you needed an extension, let's say your closing date was September the 5th and you needed a two week extension that they could navigate that negotiation. To be honest with you, your realtor on the California deal won't have a lot of paperwork to do. They'll just need to work out the commission structure with Khan and his TC and of course you. Other than that, they shouldn't necessarily need their fingers in the pot on the lending stuff. If the seller has already accepted your offer in Washington, at this point, you might be asking maybe for an extension. And again, that's before I even know what the date is. You, you, but you do not have to disclose that you're changing programs, that you're putting money down because you're not changing the price. You're not necessarily changing the closing date yet. And you're not changing the seller concessions. Not at this time. Because if anything, we would change from VA to conventional, no contingencies. And maybe ask for an extension. So I don't think there's no reason to alarm anybody right now. But so now my question to you is maybe a little not so subtle because I already have a current lender. Mm -hmm. What do I tell her if I want to go with you? That's a good question. I feel so <laughs> bad because she's really gotten me to settle down. Yeah. So she's really helped me, honestly, Matthew. I wish I could have both totally of that. you. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do at this time because we've already signed documentation with her to close the house we can do a couple of things to make it not apparent yet i would here's what i would do because i'm a lender i love relationships this is a relationship business i would be yep. offended if i had yep. worked for you for three months and all of a sudden you jump ship but that sometimes it happens for 100 million reasons and here's what we can do i can get you qualified i can do a soft pull so that nobody sees it 
I can effectively say 100%, you are fully qualified. Here's how we do the lease purchase. Now it's up to you as to whether you execute, you know, go to your other lender and say, hey, we love you. You've been nothing but great. This other portfolio type of product came up and we had no other choice as a family but to take it. I don't think that your lender is going to throw bones at you because a, a lender is going to have the ability to get the deal done or they're not. And unfortunately, in my world, it's a very utilitarian kind of world. As much as people love me as a person, if I can't get the deal done, I just can't get it done and they should go somewhere else. Yeah, totally. It's not meant so. Yeah, I there's a way to that. navigate so that I, gently. I know and my heart hurts because it was just crazy, which is three weeks. Three weeks? Basically. Yeah. Exactly. If I, yeah, there's a good chance we can still make that date. Depends on how much you love the house. And to be honest with you, if you've got a seller willing to give you 20 grand, nothing to shake a stick at. Am I allowed to forward the offer right up? Sure. I mean, I'm just going to read through it and, and see what the terms are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Do you I happen to have it. the property address on you? Mm-hmm. The, uh, the price on Zillow was 529 as of the last offer or the last contract, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. What was your final price? It is 529. Okay. And they're giving 20 grand in closing? Yep. I'm sending you the terms right now. I had to download it first because I couldn't forward it. That's weird. Yours is on a scale of one to 10. For you, it's a nine. For me, it's like a two. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, if you owned six businesses that you just started during COVID and that was your only income, I might put that as like a seven to a nine. <laughs> but can I ask you, here's something to consider just as mm -hmm. you go into the weekend and you obviously want clarity before Monday. Would you yeah. be willing to let me, would you be willing to let me soft pull and do a full application for you guys? We don't pull in a hard pull. Yeah, I would be cool with that. Okay. Then, if I qualify you and give you full green light, then you could actually execute with Con, and then we could do a credit pull, and then you could have that very uncomfortable conversation with your other lender. It, there's honestly, there's it's going to be a band aid moment. All right, let's do this because I want to make this simple, efficient, and actually exciting for you. I'm going to do what I mentioned here over the next yep. hour or two, and. Yep. I'm going to I'm going to record this video before I leave. It's already like almost four o'clock here. Yeah, uh, I want you nice. to have I want you to have this going into the weekend so you can make decisions that you need to make. You're going to get from me very firm interest rate numbers, how to maximize your seller concessions. And I can tell you I can, I can absolutely tell you that if we get to this, let's say officially Monday and you execute something with Khan by September the 1st. You don't have to wait. You don't have to do his execution of his documents right now. It's more I need to get started to make that closing date. But if we get right. started officially, if you give me a green light on Monday, then we could make the ninth or the eighth date happen. Okay, cool. I'm going to get to work on my end, and you'll have info before the night's over. Okay, thank you so much, Matthew, for your phone call and everything that you, you have done for me. I feel a little better, so I really appreciate that. My pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.